when you find the area of a rectangle, you need a base length and you need a height, right? Base times height, length times width. And our base length here is coming from the partition that we decided. We're going to break it up into four pieces. So the width of each one of these things is one-fourth. We're calling that thing delta x. Equal to one-fourth, yep, there's the width. And then for this particular example, we're using the left endpoint of each one of the partitions in order to figure out each one of the subintervals what the height of the rectangle is. You can see that the first one, hmm, we don't have much of a rectangle at all because the left endpoint, its height is zero. Okay, and then the next one, its height is going to be right here at one fourth. You take one fourth, you plug it into the function, whatever you get. That is going to be the height of the next rectangle. Okay, and then we use the next left endpoint. We're going to start at one half. And then finally the one third, plug it into the function to find the last height. All right, so this one on this left Riemann sum using the left endpoints, notice a, a couple of things. First of all, all your rectangles are underneath the curve because this thing is increasing, so we're going to be under approximating it. Also notice that we start with the first endpoint, but we leave off the last right endpoint. All right, let's compare that to the right Riemann sum. So on the right Riemann sum, we left off the first left endpoint, but we got to keep the last right endpoint. That will always be the case with these right Riemann sums versus the left Riemann sum. Okay, so let's start to try to generalize what the heights of each one of these things is supposed to be. Again, again it's supposed to be a function value evaluated at each of the left endpoints. So our first one is going to be f of 0. Then we have f of 1 fourth, f of a half, and then finally f of 3 fourths. And we don't do the f of 4 fourths or 1 because that's not going to be one of the heights. Okay. Now, keep in mind that whenever we do this little summation, this very first one came from i is equal to 1. And we're supposed to get 0 from that. This one is i is equal to 2. This one is i is equal to 3. And then finally, an i equals 4. I say that because what we want to do is write this as a little summation here. So our area is going to be approximately equal to, we do a summation from i equals 1 to 4, because we have four of these little rectangles to sum up. And we need a base length and we need a height. So we'll start with a height, which is the function value. So f of something for our height, times our width, and we know our width is just going to be one-fourth. Okay, so we're not going to use the same exact function that we used before. That one was i over 4, because if I start with i over 4, I stick in 1. If I stick in 1, then I get one-fourth here, but I know that the first one's supposed to be 0. So one of the things that could happen is that we could start this index instead at 0, and then go up to 3. That would be one solution here. But since our formulas, the formulas that we wrote down uh, in the first objective, they all start with i equals 1. We want to keep it at i equals 1. And then just figure out what we're supposed to do in order to figure out the formula. OK, so notice that. Oh, yeah, let me get rid of this, because that's exactly wrong. Well, we still have fourths, right? So this thing is supposed to be right here. It's 0 out of 4, obviously a 4 out of 4. This one is a 2 out of 4, and then obviously a 3 out of 4. So look what I stick in and what I'm supposed to get out of it. I stick in a 1, but I'm supposed to get a 0. I stick in a 2, I'm supposed to get a 1. I stick in a 3, I'm supposed to get a 2. I stick in a 4, I'm supposed to get a 3. Does it seem obvious that you're supposed to just subtract 1 from your i? That's i minus 1, and then we're going to divide that by 4. So if I stick in 1, for this very first one, if I stick in 1, subtract 1 from it, I get 0 divided by 4, and I get f of 0. Exactly what I wanted. Increase the counter by 1. I stick in a 2. 2 minus 1 gives me a 2. Wait, 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 wait. 2 minus 1 gives me a 1 divided by 4. It's f of 1 fourth, which is what I want. So here we go. Find the area here. The height of the very first one we just said was f of 0. 
times 1 fourth for the width, plus when I increase the counter by 1, I stick in a 2. 2 minus 1 gives me 1 over 4. Multiply times the width, plus if I stick in a 3, 3 minus 1 gives me a 2 over 4, or a half, times 1 fourth. And then the last one, if I stick in a 4, 4 minus 1 gives me a 3 out of 4 times a fourth. And then just like we talked about before, you'd probably want to do this with a calculator, and I would encourage you to do so. Remember, we're plugging it into the equation y equals x squared. So for example, the very first part of the sum should be f of 0, 0 squared is 0 times a fourth. Oh, that one, I got that one covered for you. That one's 0. Okay, and then you just add up the next two, three, four rectangles. What do you get for your sum? you should get exactly 0.21875 when you add up all of those things. Once again, let me encourage you to verify that on the calculator. I could be wrong. It's happened before, like once or twice. Okay, so I'm going to uh, bring both of these things together with, uh, let's say we have, we already calculated the right ream on sum. The left ream on sum is what we just did right here. And I'm going to put both of these things together. So the lower sum came from the left Riemann sum, and it was too small. The upper sum is coming from the right Riemann sum, and it was too big. So the actual area has to be in between here someplace. So how could we get a better approximation for the actual area underneath the curve? Well, there's a number of things that you can do. On either one of these cases, instead of doing one-fourth as your subinterval, you can make it smaller than that. Maybe you do an eighth, for example. Boom. And that's going to get us even closer and closer. Uh, another thing that you could do is you could average both of those things. Taking the average of both of those things, we're going to see that that is essentially um, the trapezoid sum. And it's pretty accurate, pretty accurate, much quicker than either the left or the right Riemann sum. Another thing that I could do is instead of using the left endpoint or the right endpoint, I could use the midpoint. And that's called a midpoint Riemann sum. So you can see from this table over here, using a partition with end pieces, uh, end pieces being 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, that it looks like the left side and the right side, they both seem to be approaching some particular number. What number does that look like it's approaching? If we had some sort of formula, we could write a formula for it, and then we could take the limit as n approaches infinity and basically get the exact area underneath the curve. And that's, that's kind of the goal here for these Riemann sums, and we're going to pick that up in the next video.